CC and joining us today is uh, my wife Machiko. Hello. And uh, it's our first food episode. Yep, had a great time in the kitchen. Uh, uh, we made three things, two of which you'll see here uh, at, at you know on the table. Yeah, on the in table. In front of you, live, <laughs> uh, on, live and recorded on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And the other one of which uh, you'll see it made at some point. Uh, but uh, we're not going to feature it here because, quite frankly, I don't feel like boiling any spaghetti. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's an excellent pesto, and we did try. Oh, so obviously, this is the intro, but it's also like the post game at the same time. Yeah. Uh, we uh, will go ahead and we'll go to the kitchen now. You get to experience this. Um, we're going to do this in three parts because we've got three dishes. We hope you stay around and watch all of them and enjoy it. We had a great time. Machiko, of course, uh, was kind enough to step in as our host today since I had to play cameraman. Uh, so also, since there are two cameras, you might uh, accidentally see me in the background because, you know, that's, that's the high standards of professionalism that we have here. And uh, also why we're kind of freehanding the mics right. right now because we're, at this point, we're, ah, screw it. Yeah, right. No, but no, listen, uh, let's go and have a good time. Again, uh, if you see this and you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to, to put those questions on YouTube or wherever you happen to see this. Um, and uh, we'll try to get back to you and answer those questions. Uh, uh, if you have any comments, uh, make sure they're nice. No, I'll, I'll get over it. I'm, 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 a, I'm a grown up. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so I, I hope you enjoy uh, what's coming up, okay? All right, guys, let's go to the kitchen. Okay, so Sissy, what are you cooking today? Uh, you're gonna see me make some jambalaya, chicken and sausage mm, jambalaya. Yummy. Uh, it is actually, uh, it's got uh, aspects of both Creole and Cajun mm -hmm. uh, cultures, which I'll explain a little bit later. Okay. Yay. <laughs> uh, um, I'll also make uh, two other things, which are kind of a surprise. So let's get started with the jambalaya, huh? Okay. Okay, so I have a fire on here and. So this pan is preheating. And it's really, really necessary that you preheat these things. Uh, I have some chicken here. I use chicken thighs because, well, they're good. Um, all right. Just tell me when you need me to pick up something. Sure. So we get a little bit of oil. Now we're going to repurpose this oil also because it's really, really important that you understand. All right. Chicken in. All we're doing, the heat is not up very high. So really all we're doing is getting a brown and I'm really trying to render the fat uh, off of the chicken also because the chicken's gonna cook in this pot mm -hmm. a little bit later. How long are you gonna cook chicken in a pot? In the pot, um, the rice itself cooks for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, ah, you the put rice together? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what you do is you make this gravy of sorts and then you add your meat, which will be the chicken here, and then the uh, sausage, which is in this bag here. Mm -hmm. oh, look at you! Oh, <laughs> my God! I'm happy! Yeah! <laughs> anyway. Well, anyway, you can see. Oh, it's fast. Yes. Oh, uh, because of that pound. Right. Right, and it was preheating, so. Mm. Just turn it up a little bit. And then after that, uh, we're going to do the sausages. Mm -hmm. So the sausages, as well as the chicken, are going to give up a little bit of their own favorite flat, right. flavored fat. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to use that to flavor the rice and, uh, and by extension, the whole thing. So what we're doing is we're not losing any flavor here. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people would... Uh, 
you know, a lot of folks just seem, oh, I'll just toss that out. That's bad. That's flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you're on a diet, maybe. Right? <laughs> and like I said, we're not really trying to cook the chicken. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to render Get some of the fat. Fist. Yeah. Yeah. Same goes for the sausage. Do you use like chicken broth, like like uh, all the broth for all the cooking? Oh uh, yeah, I use a, a a really really basic kind of a broth, a stock. Mm -hmm. uh, you see it right here. Oh, that's the stock yes. already done. Yes. Uh, I see. It's kind of like a uh, fish broth for Japanese people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can see this here. Is just a light golden brown. I don't want to, you know, like I said, I'm really not trying to cook it through. I recommend that if you do this, if you do this, uh, so I cut them in half. Some preparations you won't see because they'll give up their. The fat you see on the inside there, so that's going to render out. Mm. And again, we're not really trying to cook these through. Right. But if you notice what I'm doing. As I put the sausages in, I'm doing it clockwise mm -hmm. from outside to inside. That way, when you, when I go to turn them over, I know which direction to go, or which ones ah, go in first and second and third clever. and the like. Yeah, that's You know, clever. a lot of people just throw it in there and then they're like, I don't know which one to do. You know, if you want to say, well, I see, don't pay attention to television. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although, TV chefs, for the most part, would do it this way. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know that. Like, the, the so I know fire. this one's first, mm -hmm. this is second, third, fourth, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The, so the fire cooks uh, all equally? Like, my, yeah, uh, exactly. my house, it, sometimes this, uh, oh, this side. cooks very Fast Unevenly, and, uh, yeah. So even though I try to remember the numbers, uh, <laughs> I can't do that. Well, also remember, uh, a lot of people do not. They'll buy expensive nonstick cookware, mm -hmm. which is kind of a waste. And they all, like cookware like this. They won't spend a lot of money on. Mm -hmm. If you look very closely at the bottom of this pan, you can see how thick it is. Mm -hmm. And that's. It, of course, the pan will heat up slower, but it keeps its heat and right. it heats more evenly that way. That's good. It doesn't burn. So, right. Exactly. Right away. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to take a look at this. Yep, that's good. <laughs> so we just want a little bit, you know, we don't want them burned or anything. Turn over. Yeah. Sometimes if I do this, and then when I go back to, uh, if I see one that's a little undercooked, mm -hmm. I just turn it back over. Right. Or, you know. Mm, smells good, huh? Right, and then you get a good smell in your house, and your neighbors want to know what you're doing. <laughs> Shut up, mind your own business. <laughs> yeah. Go to cooking school, or whatever. You, know, you want to be right. a meanie. <laughs> yeah. So, that looks about right. I think so. back over for a minute. You can come out. You go back over. You go back over. You go over. You come out. You go over. You come out. It's kind of interesting you for me. We don't use like different types of meat in one dish. So uh, it's right. So it's quite interesting. Pork and chicken together. Yes. Mm. Pork is good with everything. Yeah, true. How's that salty feet uh, taste? So, even yes. though I don't use much salt, 
if I put bacon in omelette or something, it tastes uh, really better. It does, because it does. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Right. So we're going to turn this off now, okay? As you can see, we still have some oil in there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to saute our raw rice, which is ah. here. We're going to saute our raw rice here in here after we put together the, 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 the gravy of sorts. Mm -hmm. So here, and if I have a little bit extra here, what I can do is take this just a little bit there. That way we don't lose any flavor. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of oil here for the rice to toast it. Um, and we just have a little bit here to speed up our, our, our vegetables and, and everything else. So we're going to turn this on. Uh, on a home stove, this would probably be high. You can see it there, the fire. On a home stove, that might be as hot as it gets. Okay. Uh, this gets, since being a restaurant, it gets a whole lot hotter, as you can see. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a big fire. Yeah, that's a big fire. I almost never use that um, unless I have, unless I have a, a, a giant pot full of water. Ah, okay. Then I might cook yeah. fast. Yeah. I'm not. You are touching this by your hand. It oh yeah. Oh, I, I have. Uh, hot. So, yeah, it's gonna get really hot in a little bit. Yeah. So. <laughs> now these are our vegetables, and uh, these are well, bay leaves, which are herbs. Garlic, see some green pepper here, mm. some celery, and some onion. Now the celery and the green pepper and the onion are hallmarks of Creole and Cajun cooking. You start ah. so many dishes with this. Celery, I start green gumbo. pepper, and onion. onion. Yes. Okay. The French have what they call a mirepoix, mm -hmm. where the green pepper is substituted uh, with carrot, which is probably a little older. Um, uh -huh. This is a... a the, Green pepper is a North American plant. So, really? Yes. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> yes, um, it is. So we're going to put this in here. And what we're trying to do... The, the scoop thing was the garlic? Yes. Okay. Yes. It was smelling amazing here already. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you got to get another one, right. Okay. So we're just going to stir this. And get it started now the bay leaves will because of the moisture release mm -hmm. they're going to become more pliant so they're not going to be so brittle so they'll just cook in with this mm -hmm. and now what i want to do is add uh, tomato tomato now creole jambalayas all use tomatoes oh you you don't use ketchup no <laughs> Ooh. don't get me wrong i love ketchup yeah but i you know, in Japan, when we eat jambalaya, like school, lunch, or I've months, heard. <laughs> yeah, okay, we, we use ketchup. ketchup. So. You know, I'm sure there are some people mm -hmm. who... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my salt. Now this seems like a lot of salt, but yeah, remember... it looks a lot. We have none of the, the chicken mm -hmm. over there, that's not salted. Right. Right? Uh, that doesn't have any salt in it, the stock. Right. Okay. So this is the salt for the whole, everything, right? Yeah. And the rice too. Okay. Gotcha. So what happens is, is you add that, and then we have here some black pepper and some cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. Yes. Okay. So that goes in. And here we have some thyme mm. and some basil. Now, mm -hmm. not everybody uses these two. Although most people you'll find use thyme. It's a very, very popular herb. Mm -hmm. um, you cook a lot. Yes. Uh, so now what's going to happen is, is this. The salt is going to help the moisture mm -hmm. to come out of these vegetables. Right, right. Okay. And then what's el what else is going to happen is, is the pepper, the two peppers are going to cook a little bit. And uh, uh, so the peppers are going to cook a little bit. And that rounds out the flavor a mm -hmm. lot. So we're going to let this cook down a bit until the onions get clear. We're not trying to brown the onions. Right. Just we're actually clean. trying to, uh, yeah, 
But we do want the excess moisture to go. So, you can see it's getting kind of, uh, you can see the moisture coming out? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Right. So That's we all really from the vegetable, get the, right? Hmm? That's all from the vegetable, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so the salt does that. Right, okay. So, you know, it's important. And, you know, people say, let me just say this right now. If you can find a way at your house to burn salt, I don't know what kind of stove you have, but you have like <laughs> an industrial furnace. Salt, salt melts at <laughs> an impossible temperature. Right. So it can't burn, salt doesn't burn, it's a rock. Mm. A mineral, but it's still a rock. So it's a rock, it can't burn it. Add your salt. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to wait this out a little bit. You can see again, we're getting a lot of uh, liquid here. You can see it filling in there. Yeah. And all of that is a result. If I try to dry saute this mm -hmm. with no salt, um, I'd have to move it a lot more. And it'd take me a lot longer to lose my moisture. Oh, you mean this one? You, yes. You're going to lose the moisture in the end? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want it going because oh, I too much moisture, our rice will be... Uh, a soggy, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll have this mess. Yeah, rather I hate than, soggy yeah. rice. Yeah. Uh, right, you're like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> now, we normally use, um, we normally use uh, long grain rice back in the States. Right, Just long a plain grain. long grain uh -huh. rice. I would love to use it here, but it's too expensive mm -hmm. for me to buy and sell. Um, so what I do, I, I make it with the short grain rice, mm -hmm. and which is part of the reason for the saute. That helps the the individual rice grains mm -hmm. not stick together so much. Oh, really? Yes. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it accentuates each individual grain. It still tastes... If I were to go back and serve this exact recipe in the mm -hmm. States, mm -hmm. I would call it jambalaya stuffing. Because it's uh, the rice is the, the rice here is, is is because of this process is a lot more fluffy, mm -hmm. uh, whereas you get more a little more texture out of the rice back home. Mm -hmm. But this is what I'm working with, so right. <laughs> you, you can't get long grain rice well, here. You can get jasmine rice, but it's expensive and it's right. Thai. It's but, different. Yes, and yeah. jasmine rice has a strong flavor profile. I think it's I delicious, have, but yeah. you know, it's not something that uh, I'm comfortable using in a traditional recipe. Mm -hmm. I think I had only jasmine rice as a long grain rice. So mm -hmm. what's probably. the difference? You what probably had basmati rice too. Basmati. At uh, an Indian restaurant. Oh. If you've ever had a long, a, 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 a really long grain rice at an Indian restaurant, mm -hmm. that's basmati rice. Basmati. That also has a different flavor. Mm -hmm. They're both jasmine and basmati rices, but delicious. Right, but different. Yes. Um, uh, long grain rices both? have, all rices have two different kinds of starch. Mm -hmm. Short grain rice has more of one than the other, and long grain rice has the opposite. Right. I think short grain rice has more amylopectin. Amylopectin? Yeah, that's a starch. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that makes it sticky. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas your long grain rice doesn't have as much amylopectin. I can't remember the other name of the other starch right off the top of my head. but um, And so that keeps the rice individual. Right. You know, and it keeps it... Yeah, and, it doesn't you know, stick together. Right. I remember asking someone, I said, well, can I get long grain rice? And they said, no, no, we have to protect Japanese rice. But the applications are totally different. Right. Um, long grain rice, in other words, if you tried to make sushi with long grain rice, mm -hmm. it's oh, like it's chalk. Bad. <laughs> oh, this isn't uh, good. It doesn't it's, go with raw fish or vinegar. Right, it's, but it's not texturally pleasing. Yeah. Old. Mm, I think the, the short rice yes. goes with... Japanese recipe, right? Japanese uh, agreed. food. Yeah. I agree. Other than because if it didn't, it, y'all have long grain rice. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. But um. So, but I mean, personally, I think that 
if Japan found a way to diversify, especially mm -hmm. given its location, uh, it would be economically smart. Uh, Japan being an area that you know just doesn't have a lot of natural resources, mm -hmm. but if you turn yourself into a hub of availability, right, then then it's easier to do business. Mm -hmm. You know, but right now they're paying farmers to grow rice to grow Japanese rice. That's right. Yeah. And then you know Japan got all mad at California because California started growing short grain rice, mm -hmm. and California said. You know, it costs too much. <laughs> We're going to grow our own. Mm -hmm. And they got bad. And I'm just like, well, grow some long grain rice. Sell it. People It'll sell. In California actually eat rice as much. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, but it's a good rice growing place. They're, and where I'm from is a big rice thing. For uh, instance, I eat rice. That's climate yeah. rice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we eat rice in New Orleans and southern Louisiana. Probably at least four or five times a week, mm -hmm. which is more than twice what you see most Americans. Oh, wow. Most Americans eat rice. It's kind of even exotic. Ooh, we're going to have rice. <laughs> yeah. Chicken and rice. Right. Um, yeah, we, when we went to America uh -huh. for a short time, it was quite hard to find a yeah. rice. <laughs> especially, yeah, especially if you're in the Midwest, right? They're like, why you want rice? We got corn. We got wheat. Okay, so now you can see that a lot of the water's gone, and you can even see that some of the onion here is starting to turn translucent. And that's what we want. Mm. So now I'm going to add some paprika. Oh, the reason paprika. I didn't add it before is this. Mm -hmm. This particular paprika in particular, it will soak up a lot of moisture. So oh. it'll prevent my the, the, the moisture loss that I want, and then it'll start to burn. Mm. But I do want to... I do want to uh, make sure that it is heated through, mm -hmm. and if anything, because you'll be able to smell it in a minute. Right. Because what you want to do is you always want to toast or cook off your spices. You don't want to just mm. dump them into a pot of liquid. Oh, how so, did you figure out the, all the odors and you know uh, how mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> you, you try so, so many uh, times. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, like I remember putting my paprika in when I decided. Mm -hmm. You know, my first jambalaya recipe didn't use any paprika. Mm -hmm. And then I decided I wanted a little bit of a, kind of a, Accent. wanted a flavor, yeah. Mm. So, those of you who are watching can't smell this, but <laughs> smell that now. Oh, right? I can tell, yeah. Definitely. Can the cameraman smell it? <laughs> You're going to kind of put yeah. your nose in that steam. <laughs> Yep, mm. so you can kind of feel that that paprika. Kind of Even in a lot of spices, you can smell that one spice. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's cool. And then this is some dried parsley. You can use fresh parsley, but fresh parsley in this country, it, buying that is like buying gold. <laughs> That's right. So, it's not hard to find. Fresh and the dried parsley. parsley also takes a little bit of moisture away. So mm -hmm. I don't put that in. And dried parsley is a little harsher. Mm -hmm. Then fresh parsley, but remember we're cooking this down, so yeah, what it's gonna mellow it out anyway. Mm -hmm. So there are uses for dried parsley, uh, but like anything, you really have to kind of give it some. And then I'm gonna put in that curry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> so I got some tomato paste here. Oh, that's tomato. Yes. Mm. So that's. Tomato paste. Now my jambalaya is darker mm. than uh, some of the ones that you'll be familiar that that you know that you might see on the internet or wherever, mm -hmm. and mostly because you cook of one of the ingredients food. I add a little bit later. Right. Mm. Okay. Now. Tomato earlier, yes, but, but I wanted to cook that changed. down a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, I could have put more tomatoes uh, instead of the tomato paste, mm -hmm. but this is our chicken stock. Believe it or not, now the reason that I have this kind of stock, believe it or not, this stock is made with, and I mean the, the slightest dash of salt, mm -hmm. 
water and chicken feet. Feet? Yes. Oh. And I use chicken feet because uh, I use the chicken feet because um, I find it to be uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, 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 it makes it very, very rich. Rich. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of gelatin. Oh, I see. In this yeah. kind of thing. So I'm not looking for a super chicken flavor. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking for is some body. Mm -hmm. And body in a dish is really, really, you know, well, I guess for me it's really important. Right. That was Worcestershire sauce, which is going to kind of sort of brown it up a little bit mm -hmm. at the end. So it's going to be a reddish brown. Mm -hmm. The whole dish is going to be a, like this color. Right. Pretty soon. So now I'm going to turn this down a low. There. Is Samaraya originally from Creole? Uh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Originally it was a Creole dish. It is also a Cajun dish. Creole jambalayas always use tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Cajun dishes never use tomatoes. No, really? Yeah. So one's red and one's brown. They use which sauce? Or uh, Cajun, Cajun sure. version? Maybe. I suspect so. Mm. I, I, I really suspect so. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to let that cook uh, ever so slowly. And I'm going to put this over here so I don't have another torch. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens here. Oh, that's why it's black. <laughs> <laughs> I just mm -hmm. did that yesterday, last night, when oh, I was cooking a fish in a fish grill. Uh -huh. I put a, a chopstick, a cooking chopstick on yep, the stove. Do it. Yep, that'll I'm like, oh, I smell something very like nice. Like, how do you say it? Uh, I can't remember. I know what you mean, like charcoal. Charcoal, that's the yes. word, thank you. Yeah, and yeah. then I'm like, wait, I haven't used charcoal. Then I found that chopstick. Yeah, that happened <laughs> the other day with me. I was uh, like, well, how about that? <laughs> so, we're going to cut this into bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. Again, I like the smaller pieces. So that it can cook well, or...? Uh, that part of that too, plus, you know, I want a good distribution. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, uh, that's true, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I'm gonna cut the. I'm gonna cut this chicken. So, you, you are opening the restaurant tonight, too, right? Yep, I have a party coming at six o'clock. Oh, is this uh, for New Orleans the person? Party? Uh, hmm? Is this for the preparation for party? Too, Actually, or? I'm out of jambalaya, so <laughs> 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 I oh. didn't make any uh, the last two days because mm -hmm. for the show. Right. That's, That's why I asked you. I said, "What were we doing jambalaya?" And you said jambalaya. I was like, "Okay, good. I remembered." Right. <laughs> And so there'll be some leftover juices here. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to add that back here. How many servings in this, this pot? Uh, maybe uh, uh, one, two, three, Fifteen? Fifteen? Yes. Quite a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you cook at home too? Uh, no, no, my wife usually does that. That's, that's good. You, you yeah, must yeah, be yeah, tiring, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and she likes to cook, so. Is that Japanese cooking? Yeah. yeah. So you know both mm -hmm. your style of cooking and different right. cooking too. A lot of times when she cook something Western, mm -hmm. I'll uh, maybe, maybe give her some advice, maybe. <laughs> so, let me check on that. We always want to stir because, you know, things get stuck to the bottom of the pot. Mm. And getting stuck is one thing, and getting stuck and then burning is bad. So that just cooks away. Then we're going to do what I like to call the, the stressful part. It's less stressful now. 
less stressful. It's less stressful now mm -hmm. when we saute the rice. Okay. So you are gonna cook the other secret part. Uh -huh. I guess it's gonna be secret until it comes out. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> well, as soon as you see it, you'll be like, oh, I know what that is. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's really not cooked at mm. all. I guess it's better when you cook with the rice, right? You yeah. don't want it to be too tough. It's going to cook for 20 minutes. So. Mm. Uh, and then even then, after cooking, mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to sit in a pot and still be hot. So it's going it's to cook through pretty thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I suppose it smell something really spicy now. <laughs> Is that cayenne pepper? Hmm? Very spicy. <laughs> oh, like yeah. The chilies. Well, now, a lot of people don't realize this is that tomatoes. Tomato. So, mm -hmm. what tomatoes do is tomatoes. Um, so, if I add a dish, and let's say I add a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, mm. but the dish has no tomatoes, it'll be spicy. Right. The minute you add tomatoes, and I don't know the science behind it yet. The it minute you add tomatoes... Stronger? Yes. Uh, I've noticed that. When, uh... So we're going to stir in our meat. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So again, that's going to continue to cook for a bit. I'm just going to leave it. Some people like to cover it and cook it for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't find it to be too necessary. How long do you usually cook? Um, well, what's going to happen is, is while I'm doing this, this is going to cook. And then I've learned to do that before because I've had a couple of kitchen eggs. <laughs> <laughs> With that? Yeah, because uh, I have to dump the rice mm -hmm. into here. And when this is in the way, uh -huh. yeah. okay. and the rice is hot, 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 hot. Right. You burnt yourself. So, yeah, hot rice. So as you can see now, the, the heat here we have is on is on what your version of high. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put it on high, but again, I, I mean, I've been doing this a while, so I'm comfortable. So as soon as that starts to smoke a little bit, mm -hmm. or a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Come on! Yeah, I'm watching it's not going to make it go any faster. Check it. Um, this is not necessary. I'm going to use that for our next dish. Okay. Coffee! <laughs> So the rice, rice, yep, the rice is going in. <laughs> I hit your mic, sorry. No problem. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to stir this around and make sure that all the grains get coated with a little bit of oil. It doesn't have to be a lot of oil. Mm. Uh, and then pretty soon when it gets really hot, and then you'll see the rice start to toast. Yeah. It's and really it'll smell right. kind of nutty. Mm. And uh, so all of that chicken fat, sausage fat. sausage fat, all of that here mm. is, um, and so it's all coated now, you can see it's kind of shiny and glistening, and, you know, look at that. Now, again, like a lot of other things, we're going to do the little, 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 little. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, because this has to get up to temperature, and, and then the uh, you got to move it around after that. Kind of like uh, I will tell you though, in our next uh, for the next dish, you'll see another form of this. I'll be making a roux. Roux. Yes, roux is a French word, R O U X, and a roux is a mix between fat, mm -hmm. whether it be vegetable oil or butter or. Uh, Animal fat that's been melted. See, like, how it Oh, right. Well, that's the same. 
the reason that the curry is the, the, the consistency it is mm -hmm. is because they use okay, uh, they okay. use a I roux. I got and, that roux. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and so it makes it thicker. Right. Uh, this I'm toast. So what you're really doing when you make a roux is toasting the flour because mm -hmm. raw flour tastes like paste. <laughs> That's why when we were children we made paste with flour, right? <laughs> like, why does it taste like paste? <laughs> Think about when you were a child. Right. Unless they don't do that anymore. You put the, the flour yep. on your See, y'all getting a little toasty on the bottom? Mm. See those grains? Yep. So now we're moving them around. And you'll see whatever liquid is here mm -hmm. kind of evaporating. And then it'll... Uh, so now what happens when it starts, when the rice starts to toast, mm -hmm. it toasts um, faster and faster. Yeah, it's very quick. Yeah. Mm. Now the heat is on high, mm. which is why you got to move it around. Yeah, otherwise you're going to burn it. Yeah, I'll just get, oh, side. I burned it. Mm. <laughs> uh, One time I sat here and I had a whole pan of burned rice. This is unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make you mad. <laughs> yeah, I said a lot of bad words multiple times <laughs> and repeatedly. And, yeah. I sure did. But I mean, it did make my rice be unburned, so I just shut up and at least I started oh, yeah. over. Yeah. Same thing goes with a roux. If you're using a, uh, a flour roux mm -hmm. and you're toasting it, then um, if you burn it, you got to start over. That's just the deal. Right. Um, people say, well, maybe. No, start over or your whole dish will taste burned. Mm. <laughs> Everything. That's bad. Yeah, that's not mm. good. People don't want to eat that. Although I remember my grandmother telling me one time, she, she was a wonderful cook. But, mm -hmm. You know, she just burned the toast that, that morning that we were there at her house because my parents were out of town. Right. And I was maybe what? Uh, eight or nine years old maybe. Mm -hmm. And I remember my grandmother, I was like, it was burned. She mm -hmm. says, well that part is good for you, honey. And I looked at my grandmother and mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't talk back. She but I remember thinking, rice? it was a uh, toast. Oh, toast. I, I didn't believe that for a minute. I was like, wow, my grandmother just lied to me. I, I'm sure it wasn't the first time. And, you know, back then, I think saying stuff like that to your grandkids was, uh, I wasn't scarred or anything by it. But I just remember thinking, wow, I'm still not eating that. It is burned. And I know what burned things taste like, and they're not pleasant. So I've turned off the fire. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's okay. So I've turned off the fire here, uh, and I'm just letting the residual heat from the pan mm. finish the toasting for me. As you can see here, it's kind of brown. Even smells nuttier. Yeah, it smells good. And so now, here, watch out! I don't want you to get burned. Okay. Because if you do, it'll hurt a lot. <laughs> it's too oh, hot. Oh, you like this? Get this close up. Ready? Wow. There we go. Look at that. And then we're going to stir it in. Mm -hmm. I got to be careful when it gets. Because that steam will hurt me. Wow. Now, you'll see some people, and they'll tell you that, you know, you make the gravy, and then you pour it over the white rice. Mm. That is not jambalaya. Right. You have to cook together. Yeah. Mm. I don't understand why people do that anyway. That's just <laughs> lazy. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I like... You know, gravy and sauce on rice sometimes, but... All right. 
And so now it starts the cooking. We're going to set our timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So I think you know these are, these are duck breasts. Eh? Duck? Yes. Duck breasts? Yes. Eh. So duck is very, very rich. Mm. And so I saw these, and usually when I see duck breasts, then they're affordable by Japanese standards. Mm. Um, oops, excuse me, I'll be right back. <laughs> I've only eaten in, in as nabe ingredients. It's a nabe ingredient? Yeah, we have duck nabe in Japan. Ah, I think I've had it. Mm, you, it really, as you said, it's very rich and good for the broth. So we use the broth as a soba. Right, yeah, yeah. you don't throw that away. Mm. Well, I've never seen the, the whole shape like this. Right, mm. so... <laughs> All righty. So I already did this breast here. As you can see, I did a kind of a cross hatch here. And that's so I can release, get some of that uh, duck fat released mm. so it's not so greasy. Okay. So I'll show you how to do it. It's not hard. So you want to draw it across like this. You don't want to really cut it to the meat. And you want to make it, your knife is sharp. A sharp knife is your friend. It cuts very well, the knife. Yes, it does. Mm. You yeah, buy good knives, people. I mean, you know, it's expensive, right. And yeah. they'll be your best friend and you can keep them forever. Mm. And then now we just go across. Kind of like steak. Yes. You want to do the duck stick? <laughs> oh, it's going to kind of maybe look like that, huh? Mm. One of the other things that we do with this, now I've already seasoned it, okay? Mm. It's a uh, black pepper, hmm? salt and black pepper. Yes, because I am going to, oh, I need to get a... Should I go get something? Oh, I'm okay, I'm going to use this. It's actually clean, it's been underneath. <laughs> yeah. Um and I don't think I need to use this. Would you put this in the sink for me, please? This one, I'll die. Yeah, yeah, okay. the cutting board. Yep. Thank you. So what we have here is fresh thyme, which actually grows pretty easily. Okay. Uh, even though I obviously didn't grow it. And so what I want to do is I'm going to grab this thing here. I'm going to strip, strip in the leaves off a time. Mm -hmm. You go against, back, and they come up right in your hand. Uh -huh. Then they get blown around by the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> so again, take it by the top, go against the direction that the leaves are growing, and it'll come right out. I kind of want to do that. <laughs> we'll try. Yeah. So it's really nice. I never bought that time. I only have the dry powder one. Uh, now I use that one and the jambalaya mm -hmm. because it cooks for a long time. So, and I also saute it with the vegetables. Here, try. From the top, right? Yep. And then pull back. Can I ignore this part? Yeah, yeah, ignore it for now. Cool, huh? Oh, it's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so it, just, and I usually just go like this, just. Yeah. Mm, it smells strong. And it wonderful. Yeah, thyme is yeah. actually a pretty strong herb. Uh, I love it uh, with fish. Yes. Mm. It's very good with fish. It's actually my favorite herb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it should only be used fresh if you're using it either in a raw preparation mm. or, you know, uh, something that's not cooked uh, for a long period of time. Right. Because uh, other than that, then you kind of lose its its it, the character of fresh time. Mm. I mean, it, it dried 
it's one of the few herbs that actually is just as delicious dried as it is fresh. Mm. A little different, but still, it, it uh, I, and they're, uh, they're similar, but mostly because the, the, the applications are different, but dry time holds up very, very well. So I think that's enough for now. Well, maybe you. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe the universe is telling me that's enough. Yeah, I think that's enough. So we have some time here. We have these duck breasts, and we have some sherry. Sherry. Okay. Um, now this is a golden sherry. It's kind of sweet. Um, I'm not going to get into why I have it because uh, I didn't want it. I wanted a dry sherry, mm -hmm. but it wasn't available, <laughs> and I'm still angry about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I think the app, this what we're going to be doing with this is going to be uh, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to do that. And we're going to have, we need some of this milk. Milk? With sherry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be a sauce. This is going to be part of our sauce. Interesting. Hope that's enough. Just, just a kiss. Um, and so you don't need the oil because we're going to have the chicken, the duck fat. I don't flour. This is about the organo cooked up raw. Yep. So the jambalaya has about eight and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this out of the bag. Now I'm not measuring this right now because since I'm eyeballing this particular recipe, that should be plenty. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, since I'm eyeballing it, I'm not worried about, uh, I'm going to just, number. yeah, I'm going to have to just watch it. Mm. Uh, You're going to use that I oil? was going to use this, but I've changed my mind. Yeah, that'll work. So we're going to do put this here. And then I'm going to do the boring thing and clean this. <laughs> <laughs> this flutter one better. Hmm? The flutter and flutter this. Well, I, I, I like the size. Yeah, I like the size better. Plus, I'm going to show you something that you can do with, you'd probably do it more with bacon. And... You know, so many recipes, and rightly so, will tell you to start with a hot pan. Remember I said I preheated this one? Yeah. Right, well, that was important to get a good sear mm -hmm. and to get whatever. However, what we're trying to do here, and here's a new English word for you. We're trying to render. Render. Yes. So when we render the fat from something, we're taking it out. Yeah. So the best way to render fat uh, in this case, in this case, or even bacon, is that might be hot as well. Um, is to is this one? Yeah. You know, all right. Uh, so uh, you want the fat to come out. Right. So if you want the fat to come out, the best way to do it is to uh, start it in a cold pan. Mm -hmm. Now the problem with starting things in a cold pan is that sometimes they stick. So stick. what happens is, yeah, they'll stick to the mm -hmm. bottom, the meat will stick. Uh, or any sort of protein will stick. Right. When you're rendering, you start it off in a cold pan, but eventually, since the fat's gonna come out, mm -hmm. it's, gonna, it's gonna eventually become unstuck. Mm -hmm. 
So there's that. Yeah. And then we're going to use that duck fat. We're going to add some flour, mm -hmm. make a roux. Uh, and then to that roux, we're going to add some of the thyme, some of the sherry, and cook that through mm -hmm. uh, um, with the milk. And then we'll have a sauce for our duck. You cook sauce with the duck? When, when I know. duck is inside? The duck is going to come out? To, uh, after render yeah. the fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I learned the render. Yeah, render, yeah. render, 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 R E N D E R, render, yes, mm. the rend is to break. Oh, so you're Think rendering, you're, it's kind of like breaking, kind of, mm. kind of. Um, now I'm hesitant to really start the duck now because we only have about five minutes, mm. uh, for that. So I'm going to uh, sit my ass down. And drink some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, when you're doing this with the duck breast too, or, or, or bacon, if you use a nonstick pan, it's probably a little easier. And you're not cooking at a high heat. Mm -hmm. So if you're not cooking at a high heat, nonstick is fine. Nonstick means? Uh, like Teflon. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I noticed a lot of Japanese households have a lot of nonstick cooking. Um, and it's okay. Sure. <laughs> it's okay. But I think that, and I think the best way to cook an egg is on a nonstick surface, right? Uh, I mean, you know, worst comes to worst, you, you can do it without that. But I think that a lot of people abuse, I mean, like I that pen, I need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of I went to the store the other day to get one. Now, I have that. Uh, in case I have to build uh, the, my pastas. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I have a, one that's the same size, that's nonstick, and I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, who knows, man. At some days I go through three of these. You know, it's funny, um, because, and I'll tell you, in Japanese, and, 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 and relatively young, you know, you grew up with rice cookers. Mm -hmm. But you know, back in the States, a lot of people don't have rice cookers. Even people in back home, like in New Orleans, they don't have rice cookers. So people had to learn to cook rice on the stove. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that you can't lift up the lid to look. Right. Once you do it, then all the timing goes stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these, especially now with smart rice cookers. You know, but maybe you can, is your grandmother still alive? Oh, yeah. So it's ask her what it was like to make rice without a rice cooker. She probably knows. She does, yeah. She always cooks with a pot. Oh, she cooks with a pot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. She also makes especially soft for her, too. Oh, OK. So <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you know, we have the, how do you say, butsudan, like a ceremony. Oh, right. It's called butsudan. Uh, butsudan. Yeah, we don't get okay. it. <laughs> yeah. For the, since my grandpa died, and uh. she always make rice and then Put, put oh wow! Mm. So That's old-fashioned. Good yeah, for her. She doesn't need much rice for that, right? So, right. She used pot to mix a little bit of mm -hmm. rice. So here, take a look. Ready? Okay. Done. So you mm. can see that. So it's still not a hundred percent finished. Right. It looks a little moisture. Yes. Oh, but inside is right. almost done, right? Yep. So what we do is we turn it. Mm. Yeah, it gets smells done. good. You and call this leaf bay, bay leaves? Leaf? Yes, bay, b a y. B a y, not rhodium. Oh, uh, you can call it that too. Uh, Laurel. Mm -hmm. It smells good. Cause it's good. <laughs> so these have done their job. So I'm going to take these out, and I'm drawing some of the excess moisture, excess moisture mm. leach out while I'm looking for these bay leaves. You take off. Yep, don't eat them. And, you know, I know some cultures like to serve the bay leaves with the mm. dish because, you know, they I guess they want you to know that they use bay leaves. <laughs> I don't care. Actually, in a Thai dish, they use that. And then I always have to kind of take out while Take I'm it out, eating. right. You're like, yeah, y'all couldn't do that for me? Right. <laughs> you 
know, if I don't get every every one of them, I don't get all bunched up about it. So you can see the rice is brownish red. Yeah. So instead of being, you know, a lot of applications you'll see, a lot of uh, dishes you'll see the jambalaya is maybe a little... Uh, More orangey. Yeah. Mm. This is darker, huh? Yeah. Um, oh, there you are. I see you. Do you always talk to food like friends? All the time. <laughs> I realize that you are calling the call piece of meat like, you, come here. Come here! <laughs> Think you're getting away. <laughs> All the time. My assistants think I'm insane. Not really, probably right. All right, so now we're going to recover that, and we're going to turn off our heat, and we're going to carry this over to some place to cool off and to finish cooking. Okay. Um, there we are. And don't make fun of my apron. My mother gave me this apron. <laughs> That's very cute. Right. One of my you chef friends made fun of my apron. Lots of food on your apron. <laughs> <laughs> These are all famous New Orleans foods. So we're going to put this here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's just going to sit here and cool off. You know, if you ever come to BNO and you see a pot here, <laughs> That's because, well, you know. Yeah, sneak it. I'm going to do a little clean up before we get started. I'm going to take you and put you here. Have you ever heard the term mise en place? Mise en place? Yes, it's a French term. I don't know. Mise en place essentially refers to things in their places. So everything here is going to, it's going to have its place, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the reason for that is so it's available. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go, oh God, where's yeah. the sherry, right? Mm -hmm. And then things burn when you're running around the kitchen looking for something. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, that sucks. Um, That's Mise Flock? Yes, so M-I-S dash E-N dash uh, P-L-A-C-E. Things in place. Mm, ah, so, yes. Gotcha. It's all Mardi Gras color. Yep. And that's one of the symbols of the city. Mm. The fleur de lis. <laughs> or lily flower. Oh, that really? It looks like the thing you stop the uh, ship. Anchor? Oh, uh, it does oh, look oh, kind of like an anchor. Yeah. <laughs> I see. It is a stylized lily. What's the festival for? Mari Gras. It's carnival. Same thing, same carnival as everywhere across the world. Mm, like Leo's carnival. Well, yeah, it's, yep, same thing. Same uh -huh. day. <laughs> same season. Uh, it's a celebration because in the Roman Catholic and uh, other, I think it's probably some other Catholic sects too, that use uh, the next day after the Tuesday mm -hmm. is, uh, is a holy day. Why, why is that? It's right before Easter. It's an Easter mm -hmm. holiday. So what happens is, is that on the day, on the Wednesday after the Tuesday, you can, um, Wednesday is a day where you don't eat a lot. You're supposed to fast, mm -hmm. not eat a lot. You can't have meat and stuff like that. Right. So Tuesday is the day where you go crazy. Ah. And then Wednesday you have to be all sober. Mm -hmm. Really what you are is hungover. <laughs> you can carve it silver if you want. So, go ahead and hold that. Oh, it's heavy. Wow. Right? You use that for yeah. cut off the bones or something? Uh, bones or. Scary. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. Oh my I god. I know, right? Uh, you are standing right uh, underneath. Kelly. Okay, so, <laughs> so we're gonna put these before the fire. Yes, we're gonna start cold. And you see that way we stuck, get right? more of the fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, it's gonna yep. un stick. Yes. Mm -hmm. This pan is mostly non-stick still, but mostly. <laughs> Come on. 
come to think of that, yeah, I haven't thought about stick or no stick, but ours are all stick, huh? <laughs> Just because it's old. I really didn't know that there's a uh, um, um, uh, stick one on purpose. You made up. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I almost believe that. Right. The so real world. <laughs> I'll show you while we're just waiting on this. So, see this pot? Okay, it's stainless steel. Mm. On the outside and on the inside, okay? It's got a heavy bottom. Mm -hmm. You see, it's not going ding, 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 ding. Go no. ahead, mm. hit it. So all of this here, <laughs> that keeps the heat in. The stainless steel, which doesn't distribute heat well, mm -hmm. so inside of here is aluminum. Aluminum oh. distributes heat very well, but it, and it heats up nicely. But it's not good. Like for instance, if you make a, a tomato sauce in your pot, in your aluminum pot, mm -hmm. and you leave it in there for two or three hours, right. it's gonna taste kind of metal, like metal. Yeah. Because the aluminum yeah, and the acid from the tomatoes. Oh. So stainless steel, you know what? Pay the money for the fucking pot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are like, well, if you really want to learn how to cook, I mean, if, if you're a crappy cook, I mean, then, you know, Maybe having good pots helps them. Oh, yeah, it could be helpful. <laughs> but if you really want to shine, then you really have to use cookware that's going to last mm. and, and that, you know, is, is sturdy. You know, I mean, you, you can buy five aluminum pots like this over the course of 10 years, and this, is, this could last you 20 years. Mm. Maybe longer. It depends on how often you use it. So you can see here, it's rendering out. Oh, I gotta get my palms. Oh. More juicy, juicier yes. than the other chicken or pork. Right, well all of that fat, yeah, it's not releasing yet. Mm. Yeah, I can't really move it yet. You, you're gonna wait until <laughs> you... Gotta be patient. Yeah. That's usually the thing that most people are not. Um, yeah. Is they're not patient. I mean, what are we burn? You'll know. You'll know, but sitting there moving it around, all you're doing is getting in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, some things you do have to move, but something like this, like when you see people, like when they're grilling, yeah. stop fooling around with it. Yeah. I always do that. Right. <laughs> I'm worried about burning, so I'm like, um, turn it. Most things will release when they're ready. Mm. Um, oh, it's kind of coming up. Yep. Just coming up. Can you see that? <laughs> Just like wow. the sound of deliciousness. Mm. It also smells very different. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know duck smelled like this. Duck is good. Mm. You know, like, well, for instance, duck is... The best way to think about it is this way. You know, like on a chicken, you have white meat and dark meat, right? Well, people have the same thing. We all do. Mm -hmm. Your lighter, your, your lighter colored muscles are the ones that do uh, a lot of strong work, mm -hmm. but they're not, they're not, uh, they don't have a lot of endurance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, chickens really don't fly. Right. They're not very far. So they can flap, 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 flap. Mm -hmm. So there's the white meat here. Mm -hmm. Whereas ducks that fly forever, right? right um, they uh, they have dark meat throughout the body, mm -hmm. all the way through legs because they're swimming, and when they're swimming, they're flying or walking, right? But they do a lot of flying, and so you'll see that the breast meat, which you know comes from, you know, mm -hmm. that's why, right? Because they walk. Right, and for long periods of time. Like, ducks aren't fast. Right, you never see anybody come, whoa, that duck is fast. Right, <laughs> right. I've never heard that. If you have, let me know. I want to see this duck. And somebody once told me, uh, they were asking that they were a person that kept, uh, they had dietary restrictions mm -hmm. because of religion. And they were kind of new to it. And I said, well, I'm sure you can have ducks. So this is a religion based in the Middle East. 
Here's two before y'all start trying to see what I'm getting at. Stop. <laughs> and both of them are no pork. So, and no shellfish, supposedly. So anyway, I said, well, I'm sure you can have duck. And the person said, well, I don't know. I didn't know. I, I had a check. And I'm like, what? You just don't like yourself. And they said, why would you say that? And I said, it's duck. You can eat chicken. They said, yeah. You can eat fowl. Right. I'm like, what do you think a duck is? It's got feathers and it flies. <laughs> I said, plus, I'm sure duck's not on the list because they ain't got no ducks out there unless you bring them. And they were like, what are you talking about? I go, I don't know about you, but I've never heard of a desert duck. <laughs> never. So you can see now, they're a little smaller. They're still sticking a little bit, but look at that. They're ready to come up. Come on. And so we're going to cook these through. Mm -hmm. And you can see why we did the, the cuts. Right. Because of the... Uh, you have to cook it good. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Really, it's so neat. I mean, I could have probably left it over a little more, but it's not that important. Mm. But you can see how much of the, the fat is yeah. gone. Mm. You know... Wow. And if you touch it, you can see it's crispy. Yeah. That's all done. Yes. Yes. So, one of the other things I'm going to mention now is, is when this is finished, we're going to transfer it to a plate, and we're going to let it rest. When you cook meat, mm -hmm. uh... Seafood, not so much. Although thick pieces of fish would count. When you cook meat like this, any meat, mm -hmm. when it's finished, do not cut it right away. What happens is, is this. So all the juices inside of this yeah. are at the surface. Mm -hmm. And it's dry in the middle. Right. Relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is because of the heat, what happens when you let it rest is, is all those juices mm -hmm. redistribute throughout the, the piece of meat. Oh. Whether it's a chicken leg or a whole chicken or whatever, a turkey or whatever, mm. uh, or a steak. If you take a steak right off the grill and cut it yeah. and all that juice runs out, that's all that juiciness is on your plate. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. Right. It's gotta rest. I mean, you know, if you're really that hungry, <laughs> I, I probably should just go get a hamburger from McDonald's. <laughs> so if you uh, rest? Yes. Go I, I, yes, it goes back into the middle and it redistributes more evenly. I see. And then it, it, it has a tendency to stay in the meat mm -hmm. now. Whereas it's still looking to kind of sort of get out, but the skin is keeping it from getting out mm -hmm. and the outside of the meat. So now this being duck breast. It's okay, mm -hmm. even uh, suggested, that you, it can be a little bit rare on the inside. Yeah. It's duck, mm -hmm. right. So I'm gonna push this. It kind of tells me how firm it is. Mm -hmm. So right now, go ahead, push it. See? If, it was, if it's really hard, that means it's really cooked all the way through. Right. But while the meat is resting, it's still cooking a little bit because there's still heat. Mm -hmm. And it's more gentle, so it's a softer process, and things get to the middle, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like rice. So I'm going to take these out, I think. So a little bit soft is better. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can always cook it more. You can't uncook things. Right. Well, so I don't know how. <laughs> All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tent it. Tent we use tent, it. yes. We use tent as a as a as a as a verb. So I don't want to 
put, make it tight. You just want it like just like like that. Mm. Just like that. Walk away. <laughs> Walk away. What does this do? Oh, uh, it keeps some of the heat in too. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it being crispy because we're gonna put a sauce on it. Yeah. So, so now we have this deliciousness. That, my friends, is duck fat. So, I'm looking at it now, and I want to. Hmm. Eat that. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, right? <laughs> Why would people throw this away? This is like a yeah. crime throwing this away. <laughs> um, I might have to throw some of it out. I'm debating on how much of this I really want to... That's the thing with duck is, is that I know what I'll do. You're going to take out? A little bit. Mm -hmm. I can always put more in. So I'm going to go with this for now. By the way, if you ever get duck fat like that, fry an egg in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Okay, so I have the heat on low. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this root. watch. Right? Mm. So we're making this room. We're moving it around. Maybe I want a little more flour. Mm. Maybe. cooking it because again raw flour tastes like tastes like raw flour it's nasty <laughs> okay it's not good I can think of worse things but so now this is silicone not plastic or rubber well people get all stuck doing this kind of stuff with a rubber or plastic it melted yeah yes no so now I'm getting to the point where it's cooking and cooking. You can see it browning. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want. And so now I'm going to add some of this thyme. Ooh. Yeah, thyme leaves Very hot. hot. <laughs> okay. Can smell that, right? That? Smell that? Mmm. Then we're gonna add our milk. And a little bit of sherry. I think the wind is blowing that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the fan, yeah, uh. so it's kind of taking it. Mm. Smell, uh, sweet smell, cherry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'd like it a little less thick, but this will work. Mm -hmm. It should be just perfect, or at least close to perfect. Salt Bay. <laughs> I've been watching too much of that internet. Okay.
Mm. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. See, we even lost a little bit there. Yeah. Right? So we're going to take this, put this here. Give you a hint. Be stupid! <laughs> yeah, 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 right? I just made that up just today, like just now. <laughs> I mean, I, I had the, you know, germinating in my head, but I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do until that. What inspired you? I saw those duck breasts, <laughs> and they were affordable. <laughs> That's exactly what that was. You are like, you, I'm going to cook this. Yes. <laughs> All righty. So the last thing we're going to do don't worry, I'm saving you. So we'll put this out. Okay. So this next one is something that I have not put on my menu yet. Uh, certainly not, but I'm, I'm going to feature it every once in a while. And it's going to be pretty simple. So everybody, this is uh, Jackie. Jackie's one of my kitchen assistants. Uh, say hi to the people. Hello. <laughs> so this next one, that's his last one. Don't worry, I saved you a piece of duck. Are you afraid of duck? No. You've had duck before? Yeah. I don't know if I believe you. Oh yeah, right, you did have that, okay. So, as you know, non-Japanese nuts in this country are the price is nuts. So, pecans are a staple of uh, New Orleans um, and Southern cuisine. Pecan pie, don't say pecan either, it's not a pecan. And it's not a praline, neither. Troglodytes. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> so here I have a mixture of uh, parsley and cilantro. So what I'm making is pesto. Uh, or in the pesto style, for those Italian purists who wanted to be haters. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this here. And it goes in the food processor. This is actually easy. Um, but it, it features the nuts, which is important. Here I have crushed red chilies here, some salt in there, you can see the white part, and some black pepper. And I'm going to measure this out on a tablespoon of vinegar. It doesn't taste vinegary. What it does is it actually keeps the leaves, it keeps that green. <laughs> so, because then the leaves will oxidize and turn brown and then you're like, uh, pretty. Somebody want to eat sludge? <laughs> sludge, please. Come on, that sludge. So anyway, this again, this is a pesto. Okay. This is a pecan pesto, even though there's no pecans in there yet. Oh, Oops, sorry. sorry. I hit the mic. Okay, so we have the green part, mm -hmm. and now we have our pecans. So they go in. Uh, it does help to roast them. Doesn't that smell wonderful already? Yeah. 
And I need you. I did need the oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time. Yeah, Scott, I talk like this all the time. It's very true. <laughs> okay. We want a little scrape down. Can you smell that now? Mmm. Really? I can smell the pecan. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we go on, and then our oil. Oh, from the top. Yeah. Wow, you got me in the chunk. Yeah. Oh, crap. Okay. Now, sometimes if you use, if you want to use an olive oil, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But. Make sure it's not extra virgin because then it just takes over. And then you've just wasted a very expensive nut, at least in Japan. Mm. Right? Good. Match that on, Mike. Some real thick spaghetti. Mm. I'm going to add. See olive this olive oil. oil here? This is not extra virgin, it's just regular olive oil. I want a little bit of a. How's that flavor? A little bit. I don't want a lot. Yeah, a little bit, but once you heat it, mm. you, you treat it like a regular pesto in mm. that you don't really cook it. Mm. Okay, that's what I want. Perfect. You kind of mix with the pasta. Mm hmm. Right. No, no cooking. Yeah, yeah, you just mix it. You cook, you cook the pasta and then you mix it and it's oh, just okay. really nice. Yay. Now I can lick my fingers. Anybody, anybody tired yet? Uh, <laughs> that's why I didn't cook any fucking spaghetti. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like going, yay, pesto. Oh, there's no uh, pesto. And he's like, I'm not cooking the spaghetti. So, uh, no, 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 no. But, but perhaps at some point, uh, we'll get a snippet of it for you and, and maybe splice it in at some point. Well, the, 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 us tasting it. We did get to taste it. You get to see us tasting on camera. You did get to see us. And, okay, yeah, so. And the point is, is that... Um, it was all about the what goes into making it, the preparation. Yes, yes. So, and now we get to enjoy the uh, right the uh, late results of your your labors. Thank right. you, by the way. Sure. Oh, listen, pet peeve. I see a lot of people eating dishes that should be eaten with a spoon with a fork. Literally, people. Literally, people versus 
just imaginary people. Stop. Yeah, yeah, the yeah the literal people, right. the imaginary people. I don't I don't care what you use. Right. Yeah. You can imaginary whatever. I don't care. But you know we're gonna they're gonna eat this jambalaya, and um, I'm giving them a spoon. <laughs> and for those of you who think that forks are more elegant, just remember. Forks are not elegant. Forks are for stabbing. <laughs> They're one step below knives. So, before you start, but the fork is so elegant. No, it isn't. I mean, you know, they can look pretty and stuff, but they look like little miniature pitchforks because you stab things with them. You have strong feelings about forks, I take it. You see people trying to scoop things up with a fork and they're uh, scooping, yeah. Them. Right, what are you doing? Because they think the fork is all elegant, because it's all nice and pointy. It's a spoon. Spoons are spoons are. For real people. Hey, people. Spoons are actually elegant. Think about it. You don't have to cut your food because it's just that good. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Now this we're gonna have to cut instead. Oh, yeah, I was worried. Oh, see, you I have to eat this oh. But I see. But no, don't eat your jambalaya with a fork. Fair enough. All right. Well, use <laughs> a fork. Okay, fine. But, you know. Well, it's a, it's a it's an economic uh, economical. So well, I've seen people in this restaurant. And I'm like, why are you eating that with a fork? I mean, literally, it's falling off the fork, and I, I'm just I get I get frustrated watching them try to eat something. Fair enough. Not even to mention the person that tried to eat corn with chopsticks. I won't even talk. About that. We actually do that. <laughs> I, even, I know. I don't want to talk. About that. Shall we give this a try? Yeah, yeah let's yeah. just do this. Let's do right. this. Okay. So first the jambalaya. Oh, sorry. I already smell a lot of good smell. <laughs> I'm I already there, hungry. Guys. I should have made this first. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Don't, don't, like don't let me stop you. <laughs> this is not Japanese television, so it will not be no cheesy sound effects. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no food tremors. Right. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I watched them do it in my restaurant. Okay, that. Yeah, I can definitely see what you talked about a tomato. Right, right. Because mm. I only used a little bit of cayenne pepper. Yeah, right. Right. Mm, so, this is good. so that's the house jambalaya, and I will do my friends a favor and stab <laughs> and slice this for them. See, stab. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually it's your a, experiment, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so this is our treat for the day. Rest, hanging out in the store. I <laughs> think <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, you know, I think this will be good. And mm. I happen to have some sweet sherry, as well as, uh, and so the breasts were nice and fatty on the outside. I'm so, excited yeah. about this. So what I did was, Beautiful, um, medium rare. Yeah, the color yeah, is really nice. Color. Well, you can't, but. Maybe you should show them. Maybe we'll show them the color. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wait, uh, like you want to show them the color? With a stabby thing, yeah. Oh, okay. Here, you want a stabby thing? Well, just to show them. Elegant just to stabby show them the color. thing. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There you guys. Can you, can you see that, guys? So there's the nice, lovely shade of pink. Yeah, food tremors. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're cutting it up so that we can, yes, as, as, as adults, eat with a spoon. No, 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 no. Oh, we can we stab it. We can stab it. Oh, all right, all right. I, I thought so I was. Y'all want to share it for? You are. Right. Here, I, yeah, I, I, you know what? Here, sweetie, would you like me to? Here, you want some uh, sauce on that? Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Twice in one shot. Okay. How is it? Maybe with some sauce next time. Mm, I, I got sauce too. Oh, okay, good. Here, so the sauce is mm. a uh, thyme infused uh, uh, cream sauce with. Uh, Sherry background, some sherry. Listen to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Act like I know what I'm talking about. Mm, right? nice. okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. These aren't trying to. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, that's so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. I had a good time. This was amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Wow. Okay, we're going to cook you some so duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, guys, um, go cook this yourself. And, you know, if you can get the ingredients where you are, hopefully you're in a. Country where they're less rarefied. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, don't cost uh, an arm and leg. I will tell you a piece of advice though. Like I said, this is the first time I kind of worked with a sauce like this. Um, I mean, uh, like off the cuff. So 
I will say that uh, in the future, uh, I would thin this out a little bit. I'd probably add a little less flour uh, and maybe toast it a little longer. Um, and uh, then I'd have a little bit of a looser sauce. And I think that might do all right, although this is pretty good. It's, it's more redolent of the, of, of the biscuits and gravy type sauce. A yeah, thing, yeah. I think. Um, but uh, remember, when you cook it at home for yourself, cook what you like. <laughs> there you go. We're, you know, words of wisdom from the master. So uh, thanks for joining us for our food, first food episode. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, thanks to Machiko for being such a good yep. sport. Yeah, thank you. Yay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Uh, but yeah, we look forward to it and we hope you enjoy it. So we'll see you next time on CCNC. See y'all. Take it easy now.